the most insane, dangerous, and fun playgrounds the world has ever known. These places are sure to keep kids and adults entertained for hours. Here are the top 15 most amazing playgrounds and parks. Number 15, Monstrosity. While most parks have a normal looking slide, jungle gym, and set of swings, Monstrosity is a little bit different. Opened in St. Louis, Missouri in 2002, it's a massive installation in front of the city museum. And it's cool due to the fact that it serves both as a modern art sculpture and a playground. You see, the entire thing consists of recycled items, which includes two Sabre Liner 40 aircraft fuselages that are suspended high in the air, a fire engine, a castle turret, and a seven and a half meter tall cupola. In order to get around, you have to crawl through a series of one meter wide slinkies, wade through rubber dodgeball pits, and at times even race down its 10 story tall metal tube slide. As a result, this park is extreme enough to be loved by both children and adults alike. Number 14, the Inflatable Island Playground. The Philippines is known for being an extremely hot country, and so in order to beat the heat, many head over to the country's famous Inflatable Island Playground. Located in Olangapo City, it's a unicorn-themed playground that stands apart due to the fact that it not only floats above water, but more importantly, is absolutely massive. Consisting of an area that's as big as eight basketball courts placed side by side, it has a host of rainbow-colored attractions that allow kids to climb, jump, and slide around. Although the inflatable material makes it super slippery, which may even make standing upright on this floating park pretty tricky. To top this off, the inflatable island is sectioned off into areas of increasing difficulty, making it a fun destination for kids and arguably adults of all ages. Number 13. St. Kilda Adventure Playground. If you're looking for a playground that's both eccentric and packed with fun, then look no further than St. Kilda Adventure Playground. Located in St. Kilda, Australia, it differs from the typical set of plastic play structures and slides due to the fact that it's constructed almost completely out of recycled materials. These materials are used to create imaginative play structures such as a shipwreck, a wooden castle, a set of go-karts, some flying foxes, and a selection of slides and trampolines. And if those amenities aren't enough, you can even make use of the park's metal halfpipe and small basketball court. The park has been popular ever since its inception in 1982, and if you have any young kids or relatives, we suggest bringing them here if you're ever in the area. Number 12, Lake Macquarie Variety Playground. When you were young, you probably thought that the slide at your local park was pretty long. However, we're almost sure that it came nowhere close to the one at Lake Macquarie Variety Playground. Located in the town of Spears Point, Australia, it stands apart from the average playground due to the fact that its jungle gym is 12 meters tall, which for reference is the approximate height of four African elephants stacked on top of one another. This jungle gym is fully decked out with climbing walls, climbing nets, rope tunnels, and platforms. Yet its one key feature is its massive nine meter tall slide, which is far taller than the one and a half to two meter high slides that would be found in a more typical park. When you further consider that it even has smaller playgrounds so that younger kids can join in on the action, it's not hard to see why Lake Macquarie Variety Playground is a popular spot. Number 11, Pod Playground. When you go to a playground, chances are that you won't see a series of floating acorns. Yet if you go to the National Arboretum in Canberra, Australia, you can visit a park that has a rather unique display of acorns and pinecone pods. More specifically, the park consists of six floating acorns that all contain different features. For example, there's one acorn that holds instruments that kids can play with, another that displays spiders and bugs on its walls, and even one that's the entrance to a pitch black slide that brings kids back down to the ground. In order to get from acorn to acorn, you can use a series of climbing rope tunnels, webs, and ladders, although if you'd rather stay down on the ground, you can explore all of its pine cone pods that are spread across the park floor. So we think it's fair to say that visiting this tree-themed park would be a real treat. Number 10, Bounce Below Park. While most parks can be enjoyed in the hot summer fun, Bounce Below Park is a little bit different. Located near Blanafestiniog, Wales, it stands apart for being one of the only parks in the world that's located completely underground. Repurposed from the ashes of an old mining quarry, it had to have 500 tons of rubble removed from it in order to be safe for jumping. 
bed, it consists of six trampoline-style nets that are built into an area that's about twice the size of St. Paul's Cathedral. This setup allows the cave to be very high while also being full of extra rooms and caves that you can explore, and as such it's well loved by adults and it's sometimes considered to be an adult playground since it helps users of all ages get a nice workout. Therefore, given the popularity of the park in Wales, we wouldn't be surprised if this idea is soon copied to create other successful parks around the world. Number 9. The Walhalla Playground most playgrounds on this list are large spaces that are filled with cool features. However, the Walhalla Playground is made in order to go against the grain. Designed in 2005 by the Dutch company Carve and officially installed in the city of Prumerend in the Netherlands. It's innovative due to the fact that it's extremely efficient space-wise while still offering a lot of fun playground features. More specifically, the playground features ribbon-like platforms that allow kids to climb from place to place and has contraptions such as modified monkey bars, slides, climbing walls, sliding poles, climbing nets, and ropes. They're ideal in urban environments that don't have the space for traditional playground equipment, and since their whimsical design has also artistic merit, they've become increasingly popular in cities across the globe. Number 8. Diana, Princess of Wales Memorial Playground when Princess Diana passed away in 1997, it was a shock that was felt around the world. And so, in order to celebrate her life, the English nobility decided to construct Diana, Princess of Wales Memorial Playground. Located next to Kensington Palace, which was Princess Diana's former London home, the park's design was loosely inspired by Peter Pan and cost about £1.7 million. Its most recognizable feature is easily its massive pirate ship, which is great due to the fact that it's sectioned off so that toddlers can play in the sandy beach that surrounds it. Younger kids can use the main deck and older kids can climb the ropes and masts. The ship is then complemented by features such as music tiles, a splash pad, player sculptures, a sensory trail, and teepees, making it a great spot for kids to let off some steam. So if you happen to be touring around in London and want a nice afternoon away from the hustle and bustle of the city, then we suggest joining the more than 1 million people who visit this relaxing space each and every year. Number 7. The Land on Place Modoc. When you think of a playground, chances are that shiny plastic handlebars and long metal slides come to mind. However, in a housing estate close to the town of Wrexham in Wales, there's a playground that's entirely made out of junk. Opened in 2011 to serve as children between the ages of 5 and 16, it's a 55 square meter plot of land that not only has small brooks running through it, but it's also piled high with pallets, tires, upside down boats, wheelbarrows, ladders, fishing nets, stray hammers, ropes, and punching bags. While having such a beat up park full of junk doesn't exactly sound ideal, it's actually by design. You see, the idea behind the land is that while regular parks get boring after a few visits, a park with so many things to throw around, smash, punch, or otherwise destroy is far more interesting, with this being especially true for the older kids. And while incidents such as things being set on fire and egg fights have given the land a bit of a bad rap, it's loved by the local kids, and despite the dangers, it still continues to be a hot spot. Number 6. Lions Park Playscape when you see a set of 200-liter steel drums, chances are that children's entertainment does not come to mind. However, in the city of Greensboro, Alabama, architectural students from nearby Auburn University created the top-of-the-line playscape using thousands of donated steel drums. You see, ever since 2007, each new year of students uses steel drums to add to this 16-hectare park, and as a result, it has many different types of structures. On a more basic level, the park has structures that allow kids to climb, jump, and swing around, although there are some that are a little more advanced. That's because the steel drum maze is also sprinkled with undulating ground surfaces, sound tubes, and sensory rooms, and these are designed to promote creativity and imagination. The park also has several non-steel drum-related facilities, which include baseball fields, bathrooms, a skate park, and a concession stand. So, we think it's fair to say that the kids who come here can easily be occupied for hours on end. Number 5. Central Park When it comes to incredible parks, few places are quite as well known as Central Park. 
Located in New York City, it covers an area of 341 hectares, and given the fact that it has 42 million visitors per year, it's by far the most visited urban park in the United States. Now, the park was completed all the way back in 1876, and it has tons of cool attractions. In the north end of the park, there sits a beautiful conservatory garden, green space such as the North Woods and North Meadow, and Alaska Rink, which is an open-air skating rink in the winter. The central area of the park is dominated by the large Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir, although other major features such as the Belvedere Castle, Metropolitan Museum of Art, and Cleopatra's Needle can all be found here. However, the south side of Central Park is where all the fun is, as it houses the famous Heckscher Playground and Central Park Carousel, the Central Park Zoo, and a large green space known as the Hallett Nature Sanctuary. Therefore, we think it's fair to say that you could spend days exploring all the cool things found in Central Park. Number 4. Nishirokugo Park if you ever get the chance to travel to Tokyo and want to have an eccentric day off, then we suggest heading down to Nishirokugo Park. While it consists of a massive 3,700 square meters of space, it stands apart because it's almost entirely made out of tires. More specifically, it contains more than 3,000 rubber tires that were recycled from nearby Kawasaki manufacturing plants. And these have all been repurposed into different kinds of features. One of the most impressive is the two-story tall Godzilla at the entrance, which is made almost completely out of stacked tires and sports a set of canine-like teeth, a walk-through 20-meter-long tail, and human-sized hands. Once you're past Godzilla, you can then find a row of peculiar sculptures and half-submerged tires in the playground area. And some of the attractions on hand include a giant tire slide, a climbable jungle gym, and even a massive tire slide that requires you to go into a tire and then slide down along a concrete tube hill. However, what's extra strange about this park is that it's not only used by kids, but also by older adults who often visit in order to admire the sculptures. So if you want to go to one of the weirdest parks around, then Nishirokugo is the place to be. Number 3. High Park When it comes to great parks, nothing quite beats High Park. Located in Toronto, Canada, High Park is a 161-hectare plot of land that's known for its wide range of facilities. It's perhaps most famous for having a lot of green space and large trees, as one-third of High Park consists of what's considered to be a rare oak savanna habitat. High Park is also home to a famous zoo, which is not only home to a pen of llamas that can be fed and pet, but also a diverse range of animals that include American bison, Barbary sheep, capybaras, emus, peacocks, reindeer, wallabies, and yaks. The park even has several well-maintained sports facilities, which include two soccer fields, three baseball diamonds, a pool, an outdoor hockey rink. Yet the most famous part of High Park is its amazing playground. The very first High Park playground was built in 1999, and it was famous due to the fact that it was a large wooden castle that was well-loved by families from around Toronto. However, in March of 2012, the playground was partially burnt down in an act of arson. In response, Canadian television personality Mike Holmes decided to create an entirely new park. And with the help of $80,000 in donated funds and hundreds of volunteers, the new park was opened in July of 2012. This new structure not only features swings and slides, but also tons of cool rooms and monkey bars. And as such, this new park is just as well-loved as it was before. Number 2. Woods of Net Playground From the outside, it's hard to know what to make of Woods of Net Playground. After all, it consists of 589 giant timber logs that are interwoven into a 12-meter tall hive-like shape. Yet when you walk inside, things suddenly become far more colorful. That's because the inside consists of a web of multicolored hand-dated nets, making this part sculpture and part playground an extremely popular destination. For reference, the Woods of Net Playground is part of the Hakone Open Air Museum, which is a large sculpture park located about 100 kilometers south of Tokyo. It was designed by a Tokyo firm known as Tezuka Architects in the late 2000s in order to mark the park's 40th anniversary, and it was finally completed in 2010. In order to create it, the architects made the impressive decision not to use any metal or mechanical fastenings, and instead opted to rely exclusively on traditional wooden wedges and pegs. Supposedly, the inspiration for the structure came from the concept of a campfire, as according to Tezuka Architects' creative team, quote, The space attracts people like a campfire. Children play inside the nets as if they are in the fire, while parents sit around on the woods, end quote. Well, due to the park's popularity, we'd say that this analysis is correct. 
Number one, Ghost Train Park. While there are plenty of cool parks on this list, few have a backstory that's quite as unique as Ghost Train Park. Located in Peru's capital city of Lima, its origins begin in the mid-1980s, when Peruvian officials approved the construction of a series of towering concrete columns and overpasses that were supposed to be part of a new electric train network. However, when funds began to run low, the entire project was abandoned, leaving the series of concrete columns and overpasses intact, but uncompleted and unused. These stood abandoned for decades, but in the late 2000s, the Spanish International Development Cooperation Agency decided to change that. By collecting creative minds from both Peru and Spain, they hoped to transform the space into a place where the local community could congregate and enjoy. While they had a shoestring budget of just $1,750, this didn't stop them from making a space that was beautiful, and the end result was Ghost Train Park. Completed in 2010, it makes use of recycled materials such as old ropes, cables, tires, and car parts to create a series of swings, slides, zip lines, and climbing frames that hang off the towering concrete columns and railway platform. To top this off, these park features are surrounded by an eclectic open-air gallery of local graffiti art, with some of the pieces of art being more than four meters high. This gives the park a really youthful and fresh feel, and as such, it's received numerous awards, such as the International Architectural Award for Best Global Design in 2010, and the Children's Environmental Society Design Incentive Award in 2011. So therefore, we think it's fair to say that the Ghost Train Park is exceptionally beautiful and innovative. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.